Ladies and gentlemen, today is December 2nd, 2012, and this is the Can Kale Show, episode 61. I am your humble host, Ken Lafferty. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial, a much desired and demanded tutorial on how to acquire the brushes that I'm using in my very own comic, Emma. Because you guys have asked for it so many times and bugged me so much about it, I've gone ahead and uploaded them onto DeviantArt.com, and I'm going to show you, as well as post the link down below, where you can get those, and I'm going to show you how to install them. We're going to be going back to basics after doing all of the complicated things, such as drawing backs and butts, right, and anatomy. We're going to go ahead and go back to basics. I'm going to show you the art of using your Intuos 4 or Intuos 3, whatever you're using for your tablet, and basically talking about what I use, how to set it up, and get the brushes to work for you. So that way, when I consistently get these questions, I can always point back to episode 61. Let it be known that from this day forward, you will always be directed back to this video. But, before we get into that, it's time for the lovely lane, ladies and gentlemen. So, thank you guys once again for submitting your awesome pieces of art, as well as your Emma fan art, such as this here. Ah, oh, it just warms my heart every time I see that cute little girl. So, thank you guys once again for, yes, submitting your works of art to the KNKL Facebook. And speaking of Emma fan art, the Emma fan page on Facebook got a couple other submissions, right? We got Emma and Darius from Nexi. And we got Alicia, who submitted this awesome sculpture, like an actual sculpture of Emma. Like, look at that. It's like actual, like, cloth dress and bandage and everything. And needless to say, I am very jealous. So thank you guys for submitting that. I want more. More! The only thing I would say is more. And I'll probably put a picture of the cat saying that right there. Anyway, moving on to the Twitter. For those of you not following, please follow because I will not spam you with links when I am out eating jalapeno burgers and getting my credit card stolen by a restaurant that I will not name. But I will post links when I am uploading new videos to YouTube and I will let you know when I'm starting the stream, which is happening now Monday through Thursday, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, where you can tune in and watch me working on my very own comic. So, with all that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and move into the tutorial. Alright guys, so to begin, we are going to be making our way to my DeviantArt page, right? That is going to be located at knockworse.deviantart.com. Knockworse.deviantart.com, right? Upon arriving, you will see that my latest submission is actually a picture of Emma, but contrary to popular belief, you will not be clicking on her face to download the brushes. That will do nothing. Instead, you're going to want to go right up to where it says download file. All right? Click that. And then it will ask you to save it. Save it where you want to. I usually just send things to my desktop, right? Then we will be opening up Photoshop. Photoshop. And I'm going to go ahead and show you to get started with Photoshop. So these are the default brushes, right? These are basically what you'll get when you load it up for the first time, most likely. Right? Basically the way the brushes work, I'm, like I said, again, I'm working on an Intuos 4 sensor tablet. I do not draw using the mouse. Do not do that. And do not do that. Okay? <laughs> do not do that and do not think about it. It's not right. I used to do that a long, long time ago when I was young and naive too. But anyway, so I'm using this tablet, right? And the nice thing about it is it allows you to create very organic, awesome strokes using our brushes because of the pressure sensitivity, right? And basically the way you can tell what's happening with any given brush, like let's say let's go down to one of these soft brushes, right? You'll notice there are two different, mainly two different things that can be happening with these brushes, right? There can be the size being affected by the pressure, or if you go into, oh, the way I got to this menu is actually clicking this right here. And in CS5, I think it's more over this region over here to the left, but in CS3, it is right here. So if you go to other dynamics and you go to opacity 
jitter, right? You set it to pen pressure. That's basically going to say, okay, it'll get thinner as I press less hard, and it'll also become less opaque as I press lighter. And there's like a jitter happening in there. That's weird. But anyway, these are the default brushes. Let's go ahead and say, you know, say no to default brushes. And let's go ahead and open up the proper things. Okay, what's going on here? Okay. So I got that all downloaded. Let's go ahead and clear this. So basically what you're going to be doing is to load in your custom brushes or the ones that you just downloaded, you're going to be going to uh, the side right where your brush preview window is, right at the top left, you can see. There's going to be this downward pointing arrow. All right? And then you'll see like this little diameter thing that allows you to select the, you know, the width of your brush, right? But what you're going to want to do is click the secret button that is pointing to the left, right? Or the, my left, your right. <laughs> pointing to the right. And then you'll see this magic menu light. Who would have thought you would ever be able to find this? Hmm? That's why it is magic. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to Preset Manager. Right? And this basically pulls up all of the default brushes or all the brushes that you currently have. So an important thing to do is to realize that once you load any set of brushes, it's just going to add it to whatever list you currently have. So let's say that you got a bunch of brushes that you like. Let's go ahead and delete these, but we really like this star brush, right? So just select all of those except for the star brush. And then when you load the Emma brushes that you just downloaded off of DeviantArt, double click that. It'll add all of them on top of, you know, what you're already using. So if you have brushes that you already use and you like, you don't have to worry about those getting deleted. So let's go ahead and click Done. And if for whatever reason you mess it up, you want to start over again, all you got to do is just go in here and hit Reset Brushes. Now it'll take you back to the default. But make sure, make sure before you start deleting brushes, if you already have a set that works, make sure you save it somewhere, right? And you can save your current set of brushes by just clicking that and it'll create a file wherever you need to. Because heaven forbid, if you lose a brush, if you lose a brush set, it's not that easy to get it back. So <laughs> let us go ahead and move on into my custom brushes and what I like to use them for. Okay? Okay. Get them. All right, so the first thing we're going to start with is flowing stars. No, just kidding. That's just the one that we kept around from before. So the Can Kale Hard Brush, right? This is the one I used to work with like 90% of the time. I used to, right? A lot of my coworkers referred to this as the Milky Brush, right? Because it kind of has a little bit of a milky texture. But the problem that I ran into eventually was that I realized I was wasting a lot of time coming in and like blending, right? Like if I wanted to blend this gray into this maroon kind of purple color, it just takes forever, right? So that was where I decided I was going to start using softer brushes, just to save time, right? And you can make like a really, really large soft brush. You can just do this. You can kind of blend much easier, right? It gives you a much more simple way to blend, right? Moving on, let's go ahead and go to the renderer brush. The reason I like this one is because it has just a little bit of cool texture. And if you're creating lines, you know, like line art or sketches, this kind of gives it a little bit more feeling and character as opposed to the perfectly round hard brush. Next! All right, so the most important thing, this is actually my favorite brush right now because this is what I'm using to create all the lines for the Emma comic, right? So let's say we have like a nice dark color, dark purple for the lines. Basically, look at the texture of this. Look at what the brush looks like when I lay it down, right? Looks like that. But it follows not only the it follows the direction that I'm pressing as well. So it creates these really awesome texturized and I don't know, just like beautiful lines, right? And I really like these for comic books, right? For comics such as Emma and Doggies. There you go. That looks more like Crash Bandicoot, Emma, but that's all right. <laughs> so that is my line brush, right? I really love it. Love it very much. 
Moving on to the ink brush. This one I use for just kind of laying in masks and just basically when I want a full opacity brush, you know, because if you're laying in masks, I, I hate it when it's like kind of like see-through and you got to go back in and clean it up. And I hate having to like press really hard like over and over again. I used to actually make masks that way by actually painting it in co completely, but I didn't use full opacity. So I was like pushing really, really hard all the time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will kill your wrist and it will become a costly surgery in the future. So avoid that and just don't do that. That's what I use ink for. Chalk is awesome because... I like to use this when I'm kind of laying in values really quickly. You can create a really awesome, quick, and dirty sketch of whatever you want. Say it's like going to be like a, a dragon, right? Dragons. So you can lay stuff in like this and say he's kind of going into the distance. So as he goes further back, you know, he'll become less, you know, there's more like mist and stuff in front of him. He's like one of those Chinese dragons, right? Kind of do quick little, quick little experiments, right? And this just allows me to have some cool texture inside of whatever it is I'm sketching. Brilliant! And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I like this brush. Moving on. Got the flat brush. This one I haven't found much use for yet, but it's kind of cool. It's fun. Hair is good for hair. Imagine that. Stubble. Uh, I don't use this much, but I probably could use it to create a furry caterpillar. Alright. Ah! <laughs> That's funny, it makes the eyeballs and everything. <laughs> That's awesome. Alright, these ones are just kind of like little texture brushes. Um, you can use them for whatever you wish. Whatever you wish. Whatever you desire. This is almost like taking ink on a toothbrush and like flicking it onto a paper. So that's kind of fun. Maybe like some blood spattering or whatever. Whatever you find suitable. Crack brush. Um, I don't know exactly why it's called crack brush. I asked my friend who gave it to me. He didn't. He didn't reply. But uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. Okay, clouds. That's good. Clouds is pretty cool because it just has a nice little organic feel to it, and you can quickly kind of just lay in some values on, you know, like whatever cottony substance or creature or landscape you're drawing, right? I really, really like it. So that's kind of fun. And then you also have Clouds 2, the sequel, which is much more soft, soft edge clouds. Yeah. Look at that. Chain brush. This is good for when you're drawing champions such as Xerath. You can just draw chains throughout it. Until the chains come really close to you, then yeah, you want to make sure you're drawing those links individually. But for sketching, it's cool. And comics, it could work too. Sparkler brush. Hey, it's like Sonic after he breaks the TV with the the star on it, right? Dun, 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 dun. Oh wait, that's uh, that's Mario. Dun, 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 this one is the V point. I'll show you how to use it. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so basically the way that you use this, and this is very important. Consider where your horizon line is, right? If your horizon line is happening. If your horizon line is happening like this, right, and you want to create a quick vanishing point, or just like a grid, basically you come up, okay, one of my vanishing points is here. Actually, you don't want to make this like really big. This is meant to be a big brush, right? One here, and one here. And basically what this does is when you zoom in, like basically if you were to take that and enlarge it, you can enlarge it as much as you want, right? And then this basically becomes your perspective grid. Make sure both of those things are lined up on your on your edges or on your your horizon line. 
Now you see what that does? Basically, all of your perspective is laid out, right? So say there's like a road. Whoa. Didn't finish that up. This is a little bit of a volatile brush. you got to be careful with it. But you can see very clearly how the grid is already laid out for whatever you're wanting to draw there. It's kind of fun. And, uh, yeah, again, I usually don't use this that much because I'm usually like just cheating perspective most of the time. But if you ever really had something that was like really important to nail the perspective properly on, it might save you some time. That's all I'm saying. Let's give it a shot. See what it can do for you. Let me move on to some patterns. Yay! This is why you all want these brushes because these patterns are awesome. I don't use them, but they look really cool and they're inspiring. Soft chisel duel. This one is a bit laggy, so in case you ever wanted to play a game of snake with yourself, you can use that brush. Again, as we get further down, these are the brushes that I tend to use just a little bit less and less. But we're going through them to see what they can do for us. All right? Charky. And that one's kind of cool. So it creates a nice little quick gradient on whatever you're doing. So you're doing just like an edge. A little bit of uh, texture on it. Nice. Square is just a squarish brush. Simple enough. This is another kind of cool brush. I like the shape of it. And it creates some awesome texture. Like, look at that. Really, really enjoy that. I'll have to find a place where I can use that. In the comic. In the comic! That... I don't know. What the heck is this thing? Huh. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. This one's also kind of like the renderer brush. Remember that? Still got a little bit of texture on it. A little bit more texture. And then this one here is our final brush. And it looks like it doesn't do anything super special. But that, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is my list of brushes. So before we conclude, I do want to just kind of go through the menu once more and just kind of show you a couple things that you can do to modify the brushes. So let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and show you how to modify and sort of make your own brushes off of this. Let's go back to that, to the ink brush. Remember the brush I was saying I was using to do the inks in the comic? Say you said to yourself, oh, I, I like the feeling of this, right? I like the feeling that this brush gives me. But I want it to become, I want it to be affected by the pen pressure and make it less opaque as I press lighter, right? So the easiest way to do that is actually to go right up here into your brush settings Click that, and then you'll see shape dynamics right here, size jitter, pen pressure. That is what is affecting this brush right here, right? But to have it affected or affecting the opacity, you'll just go to other dynamics, right? Click off dual brush, I don't know why that happened. Click on other dynamics, right? And then you're gonna go to opacity jitter and also set that to pen pressure. Usually it'll be off. Just hit pen pressure. And hit X. Try it out a little bit and be like, hey, that's fancy. I like it. I like it. So now that you have the opacity affecting it as well, say you want to save the brush. Right? So all you got to do is you'll go into, remember the secret menu? Preset manager. Right? Or wait, no. I think you do this. Oh yeah, this is what you do. Sorry, not preset manager. You're going to go into this menu, right? Once you have the brush looking the way that you want it to, you're going to click yet again another hidden menu up at this top right corner. And you're going to go down to uh, new brush preset. And then you can name it uh, inky line opacity brush. Bang. And, ladies and gentlemen, now you'll notice at the bottom of your list, you'll have it there. It's so basically any time you want to get back to your brush, you just do that. And if you want to change the position of it, say, oh, I don't want to scroll down to the bottom every time, then you go to the preset manager. You go here, basically drag it, and drop it to where you want it to be. Right? And then if you don't like it, you can always just delete it. 
Bam. Done and done. Done and done. I think I did delete the right one. Okay, good. <laughs> I was scared for a moment. I was worried for a moment. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and call that good. I do apologize that this daily is going to be coming out a little bit later. Uh, but, like I said, it was a little bit of a long day. I had a good time at the... Oh, I didn't get to tell you guys. Today, I actually went to the auto show in Los Angeles. Saw some really, really awesome cars. Got to sit in some really, really nice things. I actually sat in a Lotus Evora. It's actually one of my favorite cars. And uh, that, was, that was quite a bit of fun. And just saw a bunch of other really cool, inspiring pieces of machinery. But it was a very long day, very long weekend. And, uh, yeah, it's only going to get better from here because we got Monday tomorrow. And that means the Cane Kale Emma stream. So for those of you who have been tuning into that, thank you very much. And uh, please uh, tell your friends about it. Uh, there's tons of fun things to do. There's tons of interactive. You can ask questions. And we, we basically we have a great time. So for those of you who have heard about it or are thinking about maybe checking it out, please come join us at 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, Monday through Thursday. So with that, I'm going to call it good. Episode 61, out the dope. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. I'm Kenan Lafferty, and I will see you guys on Monday or next week. Take care.